Hey, Julian. Kathy K. <clears throat> hey, Judith. Hey, Rib. All right, 6.30, let's go ahead and get started. We are on page 63 today. Evening prayer, right one. <clears throat> this is also the Feast of Alfred the Great, one of the early kings of Saxon England. So we'll be, hey, Jenny, we'll be reading a little bit about him as well. Page 63. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And on page 64 is the Fos Hilaron. Please pray with me. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now, as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing thy praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. <clears throat> our psalm for this evening is a portion of Psalm 21, which begins on page 608. <clears throat> Excuse me, 608. Psalm 21, we'll be reading the first seven verses uh, tonight. I'll go ahead and give us the tune, and if you're able, sing along. Uh, page 608 and 609, the first seven verses of Psalm 21. Hey, Lisa. All right, so I'll go ahead and sing the first couple of verses, and then if you can pick it up, uh, please sing with me. Otherwise, read along. <clears throat> the King rejoices in your strength, O Lord. How greatly he exalts in your victory. You have given him his heart's desire. You have not denied him the request of his lips. For you meet him with blessings of prosperity, and set a crown of fine gold upon his head. He asked you for life, and you gave it to him, length of days forever and ever. His honor is great because of your victory. Splendor and majesty have you bestowed upon him. For you will give him everlasting felicity, and will make him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king puts his trust in the Lord. Because of the loving kindness of the Most High, he will not fall. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> and our second reading for this evening is from the apocryphal book, The Wisdom of Solomon. This is chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. This Sunday is All Saints, of course, and we'll be reading a different selection out of the Wisdom of Solomon. This Sunday we'll be reading chapter 3. But tonight we'll be reading chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. Listen, therefore, O kings, and understand. Learn, O judges of the ends of the earth. 
Give ear that you, you that rule over multitudes and boast of many nations. For your dominion was given you from the Lord, and your sovereignty from the Most High. He will search out your works and inquire into your plans. Because as servants of his kingdom you did not rule rightly, because as servants of his, or keep the law, or walk according to the purpose of God, he will come upon you terribly and swiftly, because severe judgment falls on those in high places. The lowliest may be pardoned in mercy, but the mighty will be mightily tested. For the Lord of all will not stand in awe of anyone, or show deference to greatness, because he himself made both small and great, and he takes thought for all alike. But a strict inquiry is in store for the mighty. To you, then, O monarchs, my words are directed, so that you may learn wisdom and not transgress. For they will be made holy who observe holy things in holiness, and those who have been taught them will find a defense. Therefore set your desire on my words. Long for them, and you will be instructed. The word of the Lord. So the Wisdom of Solomon is one of those apocryphal books that was written after the close of Hebrew Scriptures of the Old Testament and before Christ came, before the New Testament, most of them. A few may have been written after Jesus' time, but mostly it was uh, three or four hundred years between the Old and the New Testament. Uh, they are Jewish writings, and they make it into some Bibles, of course, like our uh, our version of the Bible that Anglicans use, the Roman Catholic Bible, and the Eastern Orthodox Bible. And in fact, <clears throat> Anglicans and Roman Catholics and Orthodox all use a slightly different variation of those. Our Bibles these days contain all of it, but it used to be that the Orthodox had a few more books even than Roman Catholics. So anyway, interesting stuff, stuff that doesn't get read a lot in our lectionary cycle, but good stuff nonetheless. All right, page 50, canticle number 4, is our canticle for this evening. All right, page 50, canticle 4, the Song of Zechariah. Song of the Father of John the Baptist in the temple in Jerusalem. Please read with me. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And we continue on page 66 with the Apostles' Creed. Please join me there. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> 
My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> and on page 68, please pray suffrages B with me. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. That thy holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. That there may be peace to thy church and to the whole world. That we may depart this life in thy faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. That we may be bound together by thy Holy Spirit in the communion of Alfred and all thy saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. And here I'll read just a short biography of Alfred from Great Cloud of Witnesses. Alfred passed away in the year 899 in the height of the Viking invasions of Great Britain. <clears throat> Alfred, alone of all English rulers, has been called great because of his courage and Christian virtues. Born in the year 849, the youngest of five sons, Alfred spent his life in a time of battle, murder, and sudden death during the Viking invasions and settlement in Britain. He was deeply impressed when, on a visit to Rome at the age of four, he was blessed by Pope Leo IV, and two years later, when he witnessed the marriage of his father to a young princess of the Frankish court. Following his father's death and the short reigns of his brothers, Alfred became king in 871, at the age of about 22. In battles and stratagems against the Danes, Alfred halted their invasion and secured control of the southern and part of the Midland regions of England for the English. After a decisive victory in 878, he persuaded his foe, Guthrum, to accept baptism. A man of deep piety, Alfred's leadership in battle and administration was grounded by his faith. His biographer wrote of his commitment to a monastic, influenced life of prayer. Alfred learned the daily course, the celebration of the hours, and after that, certain psalms and many prayers gathered together in one book for the sake of prayer, which he carried around with him everywhere on his person by day and night, just as we have seen inseparable from himself in all the doings of this present life. In his later years, Alfred sought to repair the damage that the Viking invasions had inflicted on culture and learning, especially among the clergy. With the help of scholars from Wales and the continent, he supervised translations into English of important classics, including the works of Pope Gregory the Great, Augustine of Hippo, and the Venerable Bede. In one of them he commented, He seemed to me a very foolish man and very wretched, who will not increase his understanding while he is in the world, and ever wish and long to reach that endless life where all shall be made clear. And then the collect for the day. O God, who didst call thy servant Alfred to an earthly throne, that he might advance thy heavenly kingdom, and didst give him zeal for thy church and love for thy people. Grant that we, inspired by his example and prayers, may remain steadfast in the work thou hast given us to do for the building up of thy reign of love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And if you will, turn with me to page 826. 826, we'll read prayer 35 there. Prayer 35 on page 826 is for the poor and neglected, and I am reminded that this also is in some ways a prayer for those uh, struggling with mental health issues. I just got a note that a friend of mine uh, 
whose younger son struggled with mental illness, just committed suicide. So thinking about them as we pray. Please pray with me. Page 826, prayer 35. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, homeless and the destitute, the old and sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, O Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> And if you will, turn with me to page 833, and we'll pray the prayer of St. Francis together. Page 833. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. Give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for thy love's sake. Amen. And at this time, I invite your thanksgivings and intercessions silently, aloud, or typed in the chat box. Amen. <clears throat> and we'll end on page 72 with the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Page 72, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Please pray with me. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. My friends, let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. All right, well, it is good to worship with you, as always. <clears throat> Great to see you. Uh, let's see, we have book study tomorrow evening at 5.30, evening prayer at 6.30, and then Deacon Sue will be taking care of you with Compline at 8. Hope you have a blessed evening, friends. <clears throat>